In this lesson, we'll discuss the optimized performance improvements in V-Ray Next for SketchUp, as well as some smart improvements related to this. To start, let's take a look at how the new NVIDIA AI Denoiser can be used to get super fast interactive previews, and then we'll move on to discuss some new GPU production improvements. The newly incorporated NVIDIA AI Denoiser in V-Ray Next uses artificial intelligence to estimate what the image should look like without the noise. Since it does this super quickly, it's perfect for making tweaks to your scene during interactive rendering and giving you a feel for the result. To enable the NVIDIA AI Denoiser, let's first open up the V-Ray Asset Editor, and in the Render Rollout of the Settings tab, let's toggle on the Denoise option. In V-Ray Next, there are two different denoisers you can choose from, so we'll need to open up the right-hand flyout window and expand the Denoiser Rollout menu to select which denoiser we want to use. By default, the denoiser is set to the V-Ray denoiser. Here, we can click the drop-down menu and switch it over to the NVIDIA AI denoiser. One thing to note here is that the NVIDIA AI denoiser does require an NVIDIA GPU to work, regardless of whether you're rendering on CPU or GPU. Now, before we start the interactive render, let's also increase the update frequency parameter to 100. This will ensure that the denoiser updates as quickly as possible, giving us a very fast and noise-free preview. Also, to ensure even faster rendering, let's switch over from CPU to GPU rendering and then start an interactive render. Now, you'll see that we get a very quick preview here, but the illumination is coming from the environment only, which is why it looks so dark. Let's switch over to our render camera scene here and turn on some lights. In the Lights tab, we can click the small light icon to enable a light I have already set up here. Now, you'll see the NVIDIA AI denoiser kicks in almost immediately and cleans the image very fast, removing all of the noise and giving us a clear picture of our scene. If we want to switch to the render camera chair scene or the render camera close-up chair scene, you'll see we continue to get a quick and smooth preview even when we keep switching perspectives. This makes the AI denoiser very useful for making adjustments to your scene's camera, lighting, objects, or textures. However, when it comes to animations, recompositing the beauty pass, or general production rendering, we recommend switching to the default V-Ray denoiser, since it's more accurate than the NVIDIA AI denoiser. We'll discuss that in more detail in a bit. For now, let's stop the render and move on to discuss GPU rendering in more detail. In V-Ray Next, we've introduced some brand new GPU production features, including the option to use the bucket sampling method on GPU. Bucket rendering gives us certain advantages, such as improved distributed rendering performance, while also helping to cut down on network traffic. First, let's disable the NVIDIA AI denoiser, since as I mentioned, it's not meant for production rendering. Then, let's disable the interactive render mode, since buckets are available only in production rendering. Next, just make sure that the progressive toggle is switched off, so that you render with buckets, and then make sure you're rendering on GPU. The default settings here for the bucket mode are going to work fine in our case, so let's leave them as they are. Now, if we click the three dots for the Select Devices dropdown on the right of the GPU option, we can select our GPUs for rendering. I'll select both of my GPUs and also my CPU to enable hybrid rendering, which can deliver even better performance results depending on your setup since it renders on CPU and GPU simultaneously. Note that if you have more than one GPU, you may also want to consider leaving one of your GPU devices free for working on the monitor and UI display. For this scene, however, I'm going to use both of my GPUs for rendering. All right, now let's go ahead and start a production render. After the light cache finishes its calculation, we will see the buckets appear from the GPU and the CPU. The large buckets are the GPU, and the small ones are from the CPU. V-Ray analyzes the hardware available in advance and automatically determines the optimal bucket size. Generally, it's always better and faster to render a production or final image using buckets, while progressive rendering is ideal for getting an interactive preview of your scene. Okay, now let's take a look at another new production feature in V-Ray Next, which is the ability to use the default V-Ray denoiser to denoise individual render elements. Let's enable denoising again, and from the right-hand flyout menu, let's switch over to the V-Ray denoiser. Now that the V-Ray denoiser is enabled, let's click on the Render Elements tab and add a few elements to our scene, which are necessary to reconstruct the beauty pass in compositing. If I hold the control key, I can add multiple render elements from the dropdown at once. In this case, 
the GI, lighting, reflection, refraction, and specular. Now, let's do a render with these render elements. Okay, then let's open up the History tab and save this render to the history so we can use it for a comparison in a bit. Now, let's prepare to do another render, but this time, I'm going to select the Denoise checkbox for each individual render element in my project. Now, Vray Next will denoise each render element separately, as well as include the denoiser render element with all of the denoising combined together. Note that the denoise render element is required in order to denoise render elements separately. Since each render element will contain only its portion of denoising, this makes denoising more useful in a post-production workflow, because you can recomposite a denoised beauty pass without artifacts, preserving the image's integrity. To demonstrate, let's start another render. Keep in mind that in order to denoise the render element separately, you will need to do a production render. This is because Firay needs to completely finish the render first before it can denoise each individual render element separately. Also, if you're denoising animations, we recommend using the V-Ray default denoiser with the mode set to generate only the necessary render elements, then using them with the standalone V-Ray denoiser tool, which will remove flickering in your animation. Okay, when the render is done, you'll see that V-Ray automatically switches to the effects result pass to show the denoised result. If we switch to the global illumination render element, we can do a quick A-B comparison with our previous render which did not have render elements denoised separately. You'll see on the right that the original render's GI is noticeably noisier, whereas the separately denoised GI on the left is very smooth. And the same is true for the lighting render element, and so forth. Next, to demonstrate a post-production workflow, let's open up these render elements in Photoshop now, and I'll show you the reconstructed beauty pass from denoised render elements, in comparison to the denoised final effects result. If I click on the eye icon to hide the effects result and then drop down the group one subfolder, we can see the denoised render elements we're using to reconstruct the beauty pass using Photoshop's linear dodge add blending mode. Now, you'll see that if I toggle between the original RGB pass and the denoised effects result, the original RGB pass is much noisier since it contains no denoising. If I toggle between the denoised effects result and the recomposited denoised render elements, you'll see there is no difference between them. This indicates that the denoising was applied correctly to the separate render elements. When reconstructing the image, they did not create any artifacts, meaning that you can now both denoise and have flexibility and control over your image in post-production. Combined with the power of smart new denoising tools for interactive rendering, like the NVIDIA AI Denoiser, and the ability to render using bucket sampling on GPU, V-Ray Next makes it possible to develop your scenes more quickly and denoise for compositing without any hassle.